Cherry Blossom family, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here or if you're coming from my friend Saria's video, welcome and thank you for coming over. If you're a returning subscriber, hi guys, I'm glad that you're back. Today we have a really cool collaboration video with Saria from Dream It DIY. I'm gonna link her information down above and below and in all of the places. Uh, Saria and I had been talking for a while and we did an ear exchange video with several other YouTubers. And um, during that time, I think it was like in June or July, but anyway, we participated in that swap. She sent me some really amazing PNK University ears. I'm gonna link that video up above too. But we have been speaking since then because this week is the Little Mermaid's 30th anniversary, or I like to call it the 30th birthday. And we have decided to do a DIY. And Saria came up with this concept that I thought was super cool. So she made two like a virtual Wheel of Fortune wheels. And so one wheel was characters, the other wheel was like types of crafts. And then we have to spin the wheel and then do whatever it lands on. <laughs> so I got very lucky, I feel. I landed on Scuttle, yes. So excited about that. And then I also landed on a top or sweatshirt, which oh, I am so excited about. I love making Disney apparel. This is probably something that you guys don't know about me, but I'm like super duper into making my own clothing. Well, you might have seen in like a crafted video, I made that cloak for Harry Potter. But yes, I do really enjoy sewing. I do really enjoy putting things together. So you'll have to go to Saria's video after you watch this video. Be sure to see what she spun for and what she is making today. I'm going to link her information above, below, and all the places. We're going to go ahead and get started on today's garment. I am going to be making a crop sweatshirt with an applique scuttle. So I love the scene of Scuttle where he's holding up the dingle hopper and he's like, this is a dingle hopper. And, or I'm not sure the exact line that he says, but when he says it, his little tongue kind of goes and sticks out a little bit. And that image is so scuttled to me and we are going to recreate that today in a character sweatshirt. So I love using the technique of applique. Applique is basically where you take fusible webbing and you iron it onto the fabric and then you place it onto the shirt and it basically makes your fabric an iron-on patch. So we're gonna take my projector and we're gonna go and project a scuttle onto the wall, get some like parchment paper from the kitchen, like we're gonna old school do this thing. And I got some sweatshirts. I got two options for sweatshirts from Walmart. These were both $6, they are men's. And I got blue, which I'm definitely leaning towards this blue. It's a heathered blue. It's actually picking up much brighter on camera than it is in real life. I did get extra large, which is quite big. And then I also got this fluorescent yellow and I'm not, I just don't think it's the right color. So firstly, what we need to do is we need to figure out how big our shirt is gonna be. And I always suggest when doing these types of things that get your shirt exactly how you want it or your garment exactly how you want it and then build a pattern from that. I've done other things similar like painting and t-shirts, things like that. Never done applique though, only on quilting. But quilting applique and t-shirt applique is literally the same thing. So I decided I want to make a crop hoodie. So I'm going to be chopping off the cuffs and we're going to be hemming this to make it more open on the sides. I'm going to be taking and cutting the neckline to make it a little bit larger. I just feel like sometimes with these crew necks they feel somewhat suffocating so I'm gonna go grab another crop hoodie that I love and kind of form the pattern from that. And I will obviously show you what I'm doing. And then we're gonna have to chop this bad boy off. This thing is long as heck. And I'm gonna leave room for a seam. My plan was to do a really, really short seam and that way when I wash it, it's gonna roll up. So it's kind of gonna be like a rough, fun edge. But I don't really plan on wearing this out a whole lot. I don't know, maybe if it turns out amazing, this might be my new favorite shirt that I wear 
everywhere so we'll see um but yeah let's go ahead and get started i'm going to turn the camera down and we're going to start modifying this sweatshirt i grabbed a crop sweater that i really liked from my closet and just started kind of making some modifications to the shirt to make it look more similar to that sweater that i love so much The sweater is porcupine. I don't know if you can see all of those pins, but we've got pins everywhere. It is time to hem. But before I hem, I want to know if you guys leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you were to make a Little Mermaid craft or something in honor of the Little Mermaid for the 30th anniversary, what would you make? I feel like I landed on the wheel perfectly. Like this is exactly what I wanted to make. So I was very, very excited about it. Now it's time to sew. I'm hemming all of the rough edges that I created when I modified this sweatshirt to be like that sweater. I printed out the inspiration. So we are gonna make this image onto this sweatshirt with different types of fabrics and I'm so excited. I'm glad I went with the blue background so it's obviously, um, we're not gonna put the sky back there but we are gonna build scuttle out of this fabric including his tongue <laughs> oh my gosh this image is amazing so i printed it out into a smaller black and white image because we're gonna use my projector so uh, this is another one of my most favorite craft things i've ever bought it was like 20 bucks on amazon we're gonna start tracing on a parchment paper so i'm gonna take my parchment paper i'm gonna measure out how much room we have on the sweatshirt to use and then I'm going to use that to figure out how big we want the image projected onto the wall so I can go ahead and trace it. As you can see I've rigged up my very fancy rigging system which is a pillow and then also a wall. I'm about to tape that piece of parchment paper onto the wall then we're going to adjust the projector to make it fit right. We have a very amazing scuttle stencil ready to go. I'm not sure if he's gonna show up on camera. But now what I'm going to do is, this is my main pattern. I'm going to leave it completely intact. And then I'm going to take parchment paper and retrace each of the areas that are a certain color and then cut those out and make individual patterns for them. You'll kind of see a method to my madness as I go on. So we're gonna build Scuttle from the bottom up. So we're gonna start with his white layer, then go to his black layer, and then we'll go to his smaller layers. His eyes are yellow, his beak is orange and a dark orange, his tongue, etc. And that's gonna help us um, kind of prioritize how we're going to build him on the shirt. Now that I have all my pattern pieces traced, I'm gonna cut around them. And then I am going to take the cotton fabric that I got at the craft store and start making uh, making scuttle and building scuttle. So I'm just using plain, very inexpensive cotton fabric that you'll find like in the quilting section at Joann's. I got a really, really, really good sale on iron-on heat transfer holographic uh, Cricut vinyl. So it is so pretty. Uh, it's kind of not picking up, but I'm going to use this instead of using silver cotton fabric because I thought this was really, really cool. So we're going to go and do that and then how this all is going to work. Oh, and by the way, permanent marker pin for his details of his face. How this is going to all work. I got several yards of Wonder Under. Wonder Under is basically a heat transferred adhesive. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and cut the fabric to a little bit bigger than the puzzle, than the piece, the, the pattern piece. And then I'm going to place Wonder Under on it and I'm going to iron the Wonder Under onto it. And then I'm going to trace on the piece that needs to be um, cut out. And then I'm going to cut around it. And the reason why you put the Wonder Under on 
first and not after is because it's really going to seal your edges in. So it's really important that you put the Wonder Under on the raw piece of fabric before you cut the pattern. Okay, we're done ironing on the Wonder Under onto the back of the different pieces of fabric that we're gonna be using. I left the paper backing on there because I definitely want to uh, keep that on to make it a little bit more taut and then it's a little bit easier to trace on the pattern pieces. So that's the next step is tracing on the pattern pieces. I use an invisible pencil or a pencil that will eventually erase and um, I'm gonna put it onto the front of the fabric, which I know is a little bit different, but for applique for me, I like to do it on the front so I can really see what it looks like. So that is our next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with all the pieces and then we're gonna start building scuttle and start the ironing process after that. Here I am tracing the pieces of scuttle that are white onto the front of the cotton fabric. The Wonder Under is adhered to the back of this fabric. All of the patterns are now traced onto the different fabrics, so now I'm gonna be cutting the fabric, and then I'm gonna go out to the ironing board and start placing things kind of on top of each other. I'm going to use my main pattern to help me kind of place things, but it's time to build scuttle. I'm kind of nervous, but also really excited. Now I'm just placing some pieces of scuttle together on the sweatshirt, and I have already peeled off the backing so it is ready to go, kind of like an iron-on patch. So you'll see here I'm kind of placing them where I want to, and I'm gonna grab the iron soon and start actually adhering it to the sweatshirt itself. I'm seriously so happy with how this turned out. So I'm gonna show you what he looks like without his like black lines drawn in because that's what we're gonna do next. But I think it really captured him. Let's, oh my gosh. So here he is with no definition. I think we got the beak, everything is right. This uh, iron-on vinyl from Cricut is stunning. I have never used this before and it is like butter. It's now time to add some definition, so I'm using a permanent fabric marker to give Scuttle a little bit more definition in his facial features, feathers, chin, beak, etc. Just kind of everywhere that really needed some extra detail. Okay, so we're all finished and I popped it on and I'm really liking how it's looking right now. So I'm gonna go and show you how it looks right now. What do you guys think? Did you like it? If you were to make one of these sweatshirts, what would you make? Like what character would you put on? And what color would it be? Um, I think that Gerald is going to be next, so I am gonna work on that very, very soon. This was so fun. Be sure to go and check out Saria's video. I'm gonna link Saria above and down below. is amazing, and if you haven't subscribed to her channel, you have to. She does amazing Disney DIYs. This was so much fun collaborating with her. Thank you guys so, so much for celebrating The Little Mermaid with me, my favorite movie of all time. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like Scuttle, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Please be sure to subscribe down below. Hit that little notification bell to join our Cherry Blossom gang. I loved hanging out with you guys and I'll see you in the next video. TTFN, bye!